Sila baragede Arapapata Wapige Yesia Ato papata Celebrate the Sibalata, Sibalata, inside and outside. Make sure you are praying. We are just opening our spirit unto the Holy Ghost for several manifestations of God's majesty tonight. Salabalakoto, he marama he you are seated in his arms he marama you are seated in his arms Some of us at the beginning of the year, 
God is reenacting and bringing them back to our hearing again. Oh Lord, I have heard thy speech. The prophecy you gave me at the beginning of the year. And I was afraid. Can this thing still happen again? But he cried, oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the year. That God will supply life to the prophetic declaration he gave unto you. We are at the middle of the year we are entering another phase. I'd like you to lift up your voice and say, Lord, tonight, in this miracle service, revive your work in the midst of the year in my life. Father, you call it victory. Victory, you say. Shibakata, this of the year. Shilabatekatea. Embrato Shabbat.
undeniably declare you as our miracle walker. We look back and declare that there is no way we would have come this far without your mercy. We thank you for being such a merciful God. We exalt you tonight for keeping us, for protecting us, for delivering us, for shielding us, for lift, lifting our hands. We thank you for being our joy giver, our restorer, truly our savior. There is none that can ever be compared to you. With our voice lifted on high tonight, we declare you sovereign. We declare you mighty. We declare you all knowing and all powerful. There is never anyone that can be compared to you. You sit in a class all by yourself and you rule over the affairs of men. Who else would have delivered us? Who else would have provided for us? Who else would have brought us out of that pit? Who else would have set our feet suddenly upon the rock? Jehovah, our survivor. Jehovah, our keeper. Jehovah, our testimony. We thank you for all that you have done for us. What a joy to be in your presence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We clap our hands in appreciation to all that you have done and been for us. We lift our voices with a shout of victory tonight. We declare today that that day will never come where we'll be ashamed to be identified with you. Thank you for being our testimony. When others declared that there was a casting down, because of your mercy, we declared that there's a lifting. Today, we give you all the glory and the honor. We thank you for Koinonia. We thank you for Apostle Joshua Selman. We thank you for the many souls that have been won. We thank you for the many destinies that have been aligned. We thank you for all the great and glorious things that you have done. Let your name be exalted. Let your kingdom be established. And let the devil remain terrified. In Jesus' name we have worshipped tonight. If you didn't borrow those hands, you came with them tonight. Can you celebrate Jesus? Come on, Koinonia tonight. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Help me look at your neighbor to your left and right and tell them they look so amazing. And tell them you're glad they made a wise decision to be here tonight. And have your seat in the wonderful presence of our King and our God. We want to welcome all our distinguished guests tonight. Thank you for making our time to be here. This is Koinonia. The assurance is that you will not go back the same way you came. Oh, I didn't get a good amen. amen. To every online viewer, distance is never a barrier in the spirit wherever you are whatever nation i believe strongly that the power of god will reach you powerfully today and your testimony will be sure in the name of jesus all our captains of industries that are here tonight all politicians businessmen ministers of the gospel can we celebrate all our guests today <laughs> hallelujah and of course celebrate your beautiful selves as well you can do a lot better than this, you know. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is important that we understand that there is a posture expected of every believer. This posture is what guarantees your testimony and your miracle. Jesus speaking in Mark's gospel declares that if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him. Who believes to be called a believer is not a cliche it's not a nickname to be called a believer is an identity of one who is resolute about his pursuit of the kingdom to be called a believer is to identify one who regardless of the situation has chosen to believe God and tonight I believe that there are many of you who came here with a passionate mind that you're not going to go back the same well this is the good news your miracle is happening already as apostle will always say that this is koinonia you didn't come here for entertainment you didn't come here to just be a spectator today whether you like it or not 
the power of God will rest mightily upon you and your story will change. The woman with the issue of blood, the Bible records that she had suffered many things in the hands of many physicians. I don't know how far and where and where you have gone, but today let me announce that you have come to the right place. Oh, I wish somebody had a better amen. You have come to the right place because under this atmosphere, there are very uncommon miracles that will happen today. Someone will be restored. Someone that has lost certain things, they would locate you. Someone's destiny helpers will locate them. Somebody, that, that employment letter will be signed and released. You heard the testimony of that lady that came here two weeks ago. She said when she heard that apostle had declared that no one would meet him twice, she stood on that testimony and came back with her testimony. I don't know who you are, but tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. Hallelujah. So it is important that you understand this posture. The same Mark chapter 9 verse 23 from the message translation of the Bible declares as though Jesus was passing two believers and heard their conversation and it was filled with conditions. It was as though the first guy was saying to the second guy, if, you know, if I, if I get the house, if I get the healing, if I get the visa, and Jesus stopped and said, if, there are no ifs amongst believers. Anything can so I want to tell you when you, as you sit, don't say if I get it today. No, it is when I get it today. Better still, it will be I will get it. This posture has changed the life of many. A man was kept by the highway. Nobody keeps a beggar at the highway. At the highway, cars don't go slow. They go fast. But that was where they kept blind but a mouse. Whatever condition life has kept you, Tonight you will know that it is not to your disadvantage. They kept him by the highway. But that was the way Jesus chose to pass. <laughs> I want you to tell your neighbor, Jesus is coming by you tonight. And though blind Bartimaeus could not see, he had a nose that could smell. You see, when life disables you in other areas, God enables you in one area. So Jesus passed and blind Bartimaeus could sniff. The Bible says Jesus had come out of Jericho. Jericho is the place of sweet smell. And blind Bartimaeus sniffed and said, who just passed? And they, they said to him, it was Jesus. Someone just passed. And he screamed out, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible speaking says, the men who were around him told him to keep quiet. Let nobody stop your praise tonight. Let nobody stop your prayer tonight. The Bible says the more they told him to keep quiet, the more he screamed even. Now this is the shocking part. When Jesus stopped, Jesus ordered the same men that were telling him to keep quiet to call him. Can I talk to somebody tonight? Your enemies are bringing your testimony. Hallelujah. Somebody's life is about to take a turn tonight. As the word will come, it is a miracle service. No matter the condition you came here with tonight, you will not go back the same way with it. If you have an amen in your mouth, I want you to shout it loud and give Jesus a praise tonight. Come on, it's the one thing that for Jesus you can do better. Is that Give Jesus some praise in this house tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to Koinonia. This is the miracle service for the month of June. What a special month. On Friday was Daddy's birthday. And today is going to be an outburst of miracles. Somebody glad. Come and give Jesus some praise. Amen. Please turn to your neighbor and tell them, Welcome to the super highway of miracles. Because before you know it, your miracles are done. Praise God. All right, tonight I have a singular privilege and honor to welcome a very special set of people in our midst. If this is your first time worshiping in Koinonia, in a service like this in the evening, please can you stand to your feet who want to recognize and say a very special prayer for you? 
Please, saints of God, help me welcome this special set of people. Praise God all over. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. At the basement, in the overflows online, we truly appreciate you. You're welcome. This is Koinonia. This is Koinonia. Our officials are putting the first timers forms into your hands, please. Just do well to fill them very quickly and legibly. And the information behind, you'll be providing us with your prayer requests. If there's anything you're trusting God to do, please be very bold and be very proud to write it because God will answer that prayer in Jesus' name. While you're doing that, please, precious saints, let's stretch our hands towards them and pray for them. Come on, prophesy into their lives. We believe in the word of God. We believe in his presence. This is Koinonia. There are things that mark for a fact that you came to this place. One of which is the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Lord will touch you in the name of Jesus. Because you have come to this place, your life will change. Everything that concerns you receives a supernatural turnaround from tonight in the name of Jesus. You don't need to tell people that you came for Koinonia. What the Lord will do in your life today will be a testimony. In the name of Jesus. Please thank you again for coming. You can graciously take your seats. Please give Jesus praise in the house tonight as we continue with the service. God bless you and thank you. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate the Lord in the house tonight? If you are giving it to the Lord, you can make it louder, make it bolder tonight. Celebrate the name of Jesus. Amen. This is miracle service. God does miracles in every koinonia meeting, but he does more and even more special miracles during the miracle service. If you are excited and you are set for your miracle tonight, celebrate the name of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6 verse 18 that great multitudes came from all over the cities of Judea and in several other cities to hear the Lord Jesus and to be healed. As we listen to the testimonies tonight, don't forget testimonies have a potential of replicating themselves. So as you listen to your neighbor's testimony, it's a prophecy for you. So I'd like us to please pay attention and get ready because the same God that was faithful to your neighbor will replicate in your life in the name of Jesus. I'd like to invite the following people to please come up stage to come and share their testimonies while I take time to read some other testimonies from our online community and some other people. I'd like to invite Ochania Esther. Can we celebrate Esther as she comes up? Ochania Esther. Okechuku Gerald Kalu. Okechuku Gerald Kalu. Hersey Khan. Hersey Khan. And the last but not the least, Isaac Balami. Captain Isaac Balami. Let me just run through that quickly again. Ochanya Esther. Okechuku Gerald Kalu. Hersey Khan and Captain Isaac Balami. All right, while they are coming off stage, I'd like to read the following praise reports and testimonies of some of our online members and people that God, God has been faithful to that have experienced the power of God. I'd like to start with that of Lara Ogun. Lara Ogun. She went for a medical checkup earlier this year and received results that her cholesterol level was very high. The doctor gave her some medication in the month of March and advised her to take some nutritional, make some nutritional changes, I beg your pardon, which she did. After one of the services in the month of May, which she usually attends online, she had a dream. And while she was on the dream, she excreted some worms with big heads and full of blood and she believed God that she had been delivered from that ailment she returned for another checkup last week of her cholesterol level 
and the result turned out that her cholesterol level was now normal and she has been taking off the medications can we celebrate God for Lara this night if you came here with any similar ailment, you will not return the same way you came in the name of Jesus the next is that of Anita from the United Kingdom Anita from the United Kingdom she says whatsoever he asks you to do do it this is in referring to the instructions of God's servant she said when God's servant Apostle Joshua Selman declared the midnight prophetic prayers can you remember the 12 to 12 30 midnight prophetic prayers she joined from all the way in the UK and she also encouraged her son who lived in Liberia to join the prayers as well from 12 to 12 30 for the entire week a son had been called by his uncle previously to help pick up a visitor and take the visitor around from Monday all the way till Thursday so a son had faithfully picked this visitor on Monday Tuesday and when it came to Wednesday he suddenly took ill and he would have gone ahead and picking up this visitor spoke to his mom about it and his mom advised him to take it easy and instead of picking up the visitor to go get some medical attention and while he was getting medical attention somebody else did the job and the person experienced a motor accident which would possibly have involved her son she's returned to give God praise for supernatural deliverance this accident actually took place between the hours of 12 midnight and 12 30 a.m the exact time that we were doing the prayers so instead of going to pick people around this boy was praying and god delivered his life can we rejoice with them tonight hallelujah the next is that of adetum basharun good day koinonia the god we serve is too faithful to fail and has proven himself in my life this month I entered this year with the zeal to serve God wholeheartedly I was depressed but decided to start following Apostle Selman's teachings I watched online and also sent in my prayer request all right just to give a quick reminder before I go on if you are yet to write down your prayer requests this is miracle service please ensure to write down your prayer requests because very soon in the course of the service Apostle is going to be requesting that we all submit our prayer requests. Please do not write on your phone or type on your phone. Write on a sheet of paper that you can part with because you'll be required to submit those prayer requests. So please, if you've not done that yet, you may please want to do that very quickly. So Adetone wrote our prayer requests and sent them in during the May Abuja Miracle Service. As Apostle laid on those prayer requests and praying, she knew in her heart that she had gotten victory now for the last four years she had been jobless even though she had good certification she had been unable to get a job in a dream that same night she saw apostle prophesying to her and the following week she wrote an aptitude test the following i mean the the, the weeks that that came after she was invited for an interview and exactly the first day of this month after waiting for four years without a job she was called for her appointment letter and she has resumed a new job can we rejoice with her tonight the same way she's writing in to rejoice for a new job this month will not escape you in the name of jesus the next is that of julian julian is writing to testify for God breaking reoccurring evil patterns in our life I work in a real estate firm and because I was unable to meet my target set I got another job thereafter in another real estate firm and in another in a short while she was unable again to meet her target and she was about to be sacked again there were already threats that she was going to be relieved of her job and then she came for the last miracle service trusting God for a different outcome God rose up for her 
and gave her a breakthrough deal of 62 million naira which has destroyed the recurring patterns if you have had evil recurring patterns tonight by the anointing of god on god's apostle they will be destroyed in the name of jesus the last but not the least annie oyechi is saying god has done me well i was believing god for a car since last year i prayed i fasted i sought god's face and then my friend introduced me to apostle joshua selman's teachings on facebook i started listening to them and building up my faith koinonia abuja came to town and my first service a lady showed shared a testimony of how god gave her a new car for her business i strongly keyed into her testimony trusting god for my own car last week apostle asked us to pray at the midnight from 12 a.m to 12 30. i faithfully did it with all my heart reminding god of my car and thanking him in advance god showed up for me on monday a friend called me to collect something i came and he gifted me a brand new laptop with some cash i was still thanking god for this laptop and then another friend called me to come and check out something for him i came and i was given a car a car key rather just like that i'm now the owner of a brand new car can we rejoice with annie tonight whatever you are trusting god for this is your day in the name of jesus don't forget the line of the testimony somebody was testifying she keyed into the testimony and began to give thanks to god that is faithful and god showed up for her as you listen to all the testimonies and these ones I've read, don't forget God is no respecter of persons. Your testimony will be the next in line in the name of Jesus. I'd like us to listen to these people. I'd like you to please step forward. Name, please. February, my aunt was assisting me to make my hair, and she saw a large patch of about. The, my, there was a part of my head that was bald, and she shouted, "Ochaya!" And I told them, "Nobody call me Ochi. It's when you're something serious." They say, "Ochaya, what happened to your hair? How, did you cut your hair?" I was like, "What happened to my hair?" And my sister, she was alarmed, so she came over and she was like, this could be alopecia. I immediately countered it. Alopecia is sudden hair loss with one or more secular large patterns that is bowed, which can overlap. I told my auntie to please help me make a hairstyle that would cover the bowed parts. And I said, God, I, know, I believe in you the next time I lose my hair. I know that my hair will start growing back. The next time I sighted it, when I loosened my hair, it was worse. Wow. It spread. I was like, hey, God, do. I could not go to salons. Like, my auntie had to keep making my hair. I, like, I was ashamed because people would ask, if I go to salon, they would ask, what happened to your hair? What happened to your hair? And I don't have any answer for them. So there was a particular service Apostle mentioned my hair. Anyone with lots of hair here, I immediately um, keyed into it. And the next time I loosened my hair, it started growing. I not just grow normally, it grew rapidly to the length of my other hair. I want to thank God. I want to thank Him. I want to thank this Koinonia service has really helped me. Matthew 10 30 says, Indeed, the hell of my hair is numbered. I want to thank God. It may not mean much to you, but the air of a lady means a lot to them. 
Can we join and celebrate God for that healing in the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. Good evening, sir. My name is um, Okechuku Gerard Kalo, and this is my wife, Oluchi Deborah Kalo. We are here to thank God. We came all the way from Lagos. And um, I have been following Apostle for almost two years now. And before then, my life was full. It was filled with so much fears, anxiety, a whole lot of confusion. And I remember listening to one of his messages. He talked about the speaking blood. He talked about diligence. He talked about a whole lot that started shaping my faith. And it gave me a whole lot of understanding of God's word and his promises it built my faith and I started encouraging my wife to join me as we listened to his messages and then we came across he's um, one of the um, teach us to pray part one then she was pregnant and before then she had three girls and, um, and she said she wanted a boy. And you all know how it is. I said, I'm okay with the girls. But she said, and Apostle introduced the pattern. We gave God our reasons. We prayed and at the end, that night, the next morning, two people confirmed that they had dreams. She had a baby boy. And a few, some months after, she gave birth to our son, Benjamin. Hallelujah. To summarize it all, to summarize it all, I came to Abuja for a project. And after that morning, I woke up and I listened to commanding your morning. I, I got a taxi. I said, take me. I want to get an office. The taxi took me to an agent. And the agent said, oh, there is a two-bedroom a, a flat for an office that is open for rent. I said, I don't even have money. That day, there were about five people there. They were waiting. They were, you know, they said they are interested. Could you believe? Because we were actually believing in, believing in God for expansion could you believe that within 24 hours miraculously i got the money to pay we are not talking about hundred thousand we are talking about over a million Some good money yeah yes that is the god that we serve here Hallelujah. he is a faithful god can we join this beautiful family i am a witness this awesome god may god bless you all in jesus amen Hallelujah. I'm Chan. Please pardon my shaky voice. Um, during the April miracle service, my one of my prayer points was for my promotion at work and an upgrade. So we were supposed to write the promotion exam in June. Then my boss came in to address us and he announced that not all of us were writing the exam, that some of us were going to be promoted by advancement. So we were there and then he called out three different departments and just one level in three different departments were exempted from the promotion exam and we were one. During the service, I had promised God that I was going to testify if he let it happen for me. And I knew how impossible it was for me to talk in public, but yet I made the promise. So I want to return all praise to God because... He even made, gave me success even without writing the exam. So I return all praise to God and I'm still trusting him for my upgrade. She has been promoted without exam. Can we rejoice with her tonight? Hallelujah. Uh, 
my name is Isaac Balami, no titles. Um, I'm here to testify because of what God has done in my life and my family. And I'll try to summarize as agreed. I came from a very, very, from an extreme humble background. Church, can we rise to our feet as we celebrate the father of this commission? Can we rise to our feet as we celebrate Apostle Selma? I'm sure you all are aware Friday was his birthday. Honor is a powerful weapon. Can we honor him as he walks in tonight? I'm sure you are not tired of celebrating. Can we keep celebrating tonight? Please, can we keep celebrating tonight? Let's honor and celebrate God's grace and anointing upon the father of this commission, Apostle Joshua Sermon, as he walks in tonight. Keep celebrating, please. God, can you please celebrate in God's Sabbath and God's grace, the Father over the commission. Keep celebrating, keep honoring tonight. Apostle, we want you to know that we really love you. We honor and celebrate you from our hearts. Thank you for your teachings. Thank you for yielding to the Lord. Thank you for answering the call. We love you from our hearts. And we want to celebrate you tonight. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Amen. All right, we were listening to the testimony of Captain Isaac Balami. But just before he continues, one more time, can you please honor and celebrate Apostle one more time? I don't know why you keep giving me captain. Um, like I was saying, I came from, an, from a very, very humble background. So I'll make it very quick. Uh, I'm an activist. And then suddenly, after some SUG riot, I was asked to leave Abu Zaria. I was depressed. I felt like committing suicide because that was the second admission I was losing, just fighting for people's rights. And then, about 16 years ago, in Abu's area at the chapel, Apostle saw me praying with my team about 16 years ago, and he said, Isaac, then I wasn't even given an admission yet into Aviation College. He said, I see aircraft. I see you going around the world. I see you doing great things in aviation. That was about 16 years ago. Because there's no way I can afford to pay millions of Naira in the aviation college. When I got the admission, my parents could not afford to pay 10% of the, of the fee. So I became the only self-sponsored, making suya 
barbecue in Abu's area with my aviation uniform every evening. I will make magdauda, which is local bread for 10 naira plus some meat inside. And that's how I was able. That's how I was, I was able to make about 300,000 naira then every month after paying three of my staffs. And I sponsored myself until the third year when I had to read harder to pass my exam. I said, God, I need to get an international scholarship. And I said, if you can help me with a, with a scholarship, as soon as I come back to Nigeria, I will give half of my income to the less privileged. And within seven days, God answered my prayers. I got three scholarships international. It has never happened in the history of the Aviation College. I was in the college in Zaria. I was earning salary in dollars. The company from Canada and Aero Contractors paid my school fees in full. And they returned back every money I've spent in three years. Somebody celebrate this mighty God. He's a faithful God. Before I knew it, I got a house in Jerry, Ikeja, in Lagos. My flight ticket, everything paid for till I graduated. I went to the US, sponsored by the company, CAC Canada and Aero Contractors. I came back, and just like the prophet did prophesy, in less than two years, at about 25, 26 years old, I had become the national president for all the pilot and all the aircraft engineers in Nigeria. It didn't just stop there. The then Sicilia Ibru, who was the owner of Aero Contractors and Oceanic Bank, met me one day and I was able to get, the, get a contract for the company. And I was just a junior staff. And she ordered that I should be moved to the board. I should join the board immediately. Before I knew it, I became a manager and virtually all my age mate in the industry, I gave them 24 years gap in earnings and in position. Before I knew it, I began to see some things in the industry when I go to bed. And uh, today, to cut the story short, when I started, I didn't have up to $2,000. And I said, I want to float an airline. And I said, I also want to have one of the biggest aircraft maintenance, repair, and overhaul center in the entire West and Central Africa. I kid you not, just last two weeks, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority gave me my operational specification. They said initially, you can't have this, it's too much. Nobody in West Africa has this kind of license and certifications and authorizations. I said, but my aim is to create jobs for the industry. Over a billion dollars is being spent every year flying aircraft to Europe, America to be fixed. And I stood and I thanked God for the Nigerian government, the aviation minister, the uh, DG of the civil aviation, and the director of airworthiness. They saw the vision. Just two months to closing it all when I was getting ready for the phase four, which is the base inspection where the government need to see the equipment you have on each aircraft that you'll be fixing up to A, A B, C, D check inspection. And I was stuck. Some investors pulled out on me because they felt the vision was too big and they left me at the 11th hour with my team. And uh, I spoke to Apostle, I came to Abuja, I met with him, we prayed together. And I went back, and within seven days, I got a phone call from Europe. And the man said that I'm the MD of this company. We are the biggest aircraft providers in the, across the entire Europe. We've heard so much about you. Please, we want to work with you. And uh, we want to start today. And um, I thought it was a dream. Maybe it was a scammer. It was a 419. The next thing, his team landed in Nigeria, they were in my office, and they said, as we speak to you right now, we have four 40-footer containers coming under your name. 
They say, as we speak to you right now, we wanted to partner with other companies, but we, were, we have been advised to partner with your organization because of your track record. This company is worth over 100 million euros. 100 billion euros. Within 14 days, they used DHL to shift in equipment for aircraft maintenance worth over 5 million US dollars. So when the government of Nigeria came to inspect, they saw that we have every equipment tools. And this vision took me nine years, by the way. So in nine years, myself and my team, we've been able to train and empower and give authorization to over 65 aircraft engineers. Most of them, including myself, are trained in the US. Some have work experience with top airlines in the world. And today, I'm happy to say that in the next few weeks, we'll be launching one of the biggest aircraft hangar in the industry. Somebody, can you celebrate the name of the Lord? As if that is not enough, we were to float an airline, and I wrote the business plan, registered the business, about 10 million dollars to register about 500 million share capital. It takes a minimum of about one year, averagely, to get an air transport license. We got ours in three months. As if that is not enough, somebody called me. <laughs> the God of more than enough. Can we celebrate the Almighty God again tonight? The God of the overflow. Somebody called me and said, I saw on the media that you are floating the first ever premium airline with Wi-Fi on board and water view. He said, I've just bought seven aircrafts cash. Please, can you take them and run them? As if that is not enough. We serve the God that confirms the word of his servants and performs the counsels of his messengers. Can you celebrate the grace of God upon this ministry one more time? Hallelujah. Somebody said, since you have interest in the oil and gas helicopter business, he said, I'm meant to take these three helicopters out of this country. Each one is 22 million US dollars. That is, for, that is 66 million US dollars. Please, can you take them and run them? Just a few weeks ago, my vision has always been the same way I came from nowhere to get to where I am today. How can we raise aircraft engineers, pilots, avionics, and in different fields that with just two years training, they will be able to have a license and a certification that will earn them $10,000 a month. Just a few weeks ago, we got an approval, a letter, that the Lagos State Government and MBTE, that is the uh, Polytechnics, they have also allowed us to go ahead to start Seven Star Global Institute of Management, Science and Technology. The aim is to raise aviators and other people across different sectors. Why am I sharing this testimony? I'm not here to impress anybody. I was meant to do this a long time ago, but I always feel heavy, but I felt there's somebody out there who just feel like giving up. I can tell you categorically, nine years, even a pregnant mother, after nine months, if the baby is not coming out, she's agitated. Severally, I almost thought of committing suicide. Severally, I felt like leaving this country. But I said, no, God, you said I have a role to play in this country. Why should I leave? And just when I want to leave, I'll be giving offers across the globe, and then something says, stay. I'm happy today that through the help of God, and even through the apostle, we are not just in Lagos airport, we are occupying over 45,000 square meters of land. And we are growing very, very fast. I thank God, I give God all the glory, and I want to assure you that whatsoever it is that is your dream, no matter how big it is, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't allow friends and families or anybody to distract you. Remain focused. Trust in God. I'm happy I was able to achieve this with my team without joining any cult, without denying Jesus. Thank you very much.
Can we rise to our feet and give praise to Almighty God tonight? Let's celebrate the name of the Lord. Somebody once said, when God does a thing, He goes into hiding to see what the sons of men will do. God has been faithful to us in Koinonia, and we are grateful people. Can we celebrate His name one more time with a shout of praise? Let these testimonies inspire you. A dream is a seed. When you keep following one course, the Lord will bring success out of it. Tonight is the night of somebody's testimony in the name of Jesus. Please don't forget to write down your prayer request because in the course of this service, it will be required of you. Tonight is miracle service and you will not leave without receiving your own miracle in the name of Jesus. Can we shout and praise the Lord one more time? Hallelujah. Can you give those hands to Jesus? Please celebrate your maker, Jesus. Praise God. Can we just in two minutes return the glory to God and say, Father, we are grateful. We thank you. Just make sure heaven is hearing your voice as you say, Lord, thank you. Don't ask God for anything yet. Just bless him. Lord, we are grateful. For no man can do this except the Lord be with him. We thank you for awesome testimony. For the things you have done, the battle you have won, only you are worthy of our praise. We thank you. We are not ashamed to let the world know that you are the doer. Take all the glory, take all the honor. Take all the adoration. In one minute, can we bless God for the life of our Father? Say, Lord, we thank you for the life of our Father. We bless you for your grace, for preservation, for protection, for fresh oil, for wisdom, for taking him from glory to glory, for giving us the privilege to partake of this grace. Lord, we thank you. We bless you. One more time, can you say, Lord, I am here tonight. I'm not going back to say, Lord, give me my portion tonight. Give me my location tonight. You call it miracle service. I'm not going back the same. I'm taking that which belongs to me. I'm looking up to you, Lord. Turn my captivity around, oh God. Change my story. Thank God for where you are, but there is more. Is someone praying tonight? Just a few minutes as you pray and say, Lord, visit me. Visit my family. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we have prayed. Praise God. Please, I'd like you to package your offering, your tithe, your kingdom investment, your vow, your prophetic seed. I know there are people here who said, I came with my prophetic seed. How will I get it to our Father? Please make sure they are well packaged and well labeled. The finance department know what to do. Please, if you are a tighter in the house, can you make your way to the front? Inside, all overflow, please walk to the front of your screen. Tighter, so you are paying your tithe to God. Please make your way to the front wherever you are. You are following the meeting online. Please, our account number will be displayed to you for you to pay your tithe, give your offering and your prophetic seed. There is someone here said, I, I, while I was coming for the meeting, I, I couldn't have access to cash. Please indicate or give a sign. The PR officials will give you the POS for you to pay your tithe and give your offering or sow your prophetic seed. Please, I'd like you to, while titles are still coming, please lift up your offering to heaven and speak to God concerning your tithe. Speak to God concerning your offering. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Will men give to your bosom? He said, bring God a tithe into my storehouse that they may be meet. Prove me now, say the Lord. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you a blessing that we will not have a room enough to give. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave. Please speak to God. Speak to God. Give your way into victory. Give expect wisdom. Give expect the ministry of men. Give expect revelation. Give expect favor. Please speak to God concerning your offer. Concerning your seed. Lord, I've seen what you are doing. In this ministry financially, Lord, change my story. That he has taught us that God, you can use a seed to end a season and you can use a seed to start up another new season in your life. Father, we thank you. We bless you from the depth of our heart. And we ask, oh Lord, that tonight you accept our seed, our offering, our tithe. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we have prayed. 
please I'd like you to cast your seed, your offering with joy and gladness of heart hallelujah hallelujah if you're excited to be in this miracle service can you put your hands together and celebrate the Lord one more time he's a faithful God I would like to encourage you that um, in the next few minutes just put aside every worry put aside every distraction and let your entire attention and gaze be upon the Lord himself because in this very miracle service we have one of God's mighty vessels in the house Koinonia this man of God began his music ministry um, I hope I'm right in the year 1990 which means 31 years of music ministry 31 years of notable kingdom impact when you listen to his songs you are sure to experience the presence of God to experience the power of God and to experience that spirit of revival and tonight Koinonia can we give a warm welcome let's clap our hands as we receive of the ministry
Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Ura baka bahashele ne kebrali ne kebahala. We love you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we honor you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's such a blessing to be here this evening. It's such a blessing, a great privilege. Please, can we celebrate God for this honor? Amen. Hey, to be here, let's celebrate the grace of God. Thank you, Father. I just want to seize this moment to honor the one that, you know, is due to be honored. I want to celebrate our pastor. Amen. I want to celebrate the grace of God at work in this house through the ministry of our dear man of God. I thank God for what God is doing. If you're here and you've been imparted, blessed by this awesome grace, can we celebrate God this evening? Let's celebrate God this evening. Let's celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The ageless, the changeless, the dies. Oh, hallelujah. The spirit of the living God, the river of life, the spirit of truth. Take your place, spirit move. The spirit of the living God, the river of life, the spirit of truth. Take your place, spirit move. Take your place, spirit move.
receive the release of the Spirit tonight.
situation any and every situation he is God over that circumstance he is God over that issue he is God over all flesh call him by his name your name is God your name is God
depart your feet Now before your throne Glorious, beautiful Hallelujah. Keep worshiping. Bless his name. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not his benefits. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You're all welcome to a miracle service for the month of June. The Lord himself will do us good tonight in the name of Jesus Christ I truly honor and appreciate everyone here um, everyone created by God is indeed a special person so honor to everyone in Jesus name but just allow me express honor to a, one or two people we have in our midst Bishop Victor Ozosike, Kingdom Life Gospel Outreach, Portacourt, River State. God bless you, sir. Such a humble and amazing man of God. I love you sincerely. Thank you. Thank you. And then a dear friend and brother, Apostle Paul Ame from Lagos. Thank you. Truly honor you, sir. Amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, we're also honored to have Ezekiel, thank God you call them Easy Concepts and the entire crew, Judy K, G U C. Where are they? Praise the name of the Lord. Let's celebrate them. Give them a big, big God bless you. Hallelujah. By the way, please, are you here? Just come. All of you, the entire team, let's honor them as they come up. Please, let's celebrate them celebrate them what a mighty army a team of great people we are a house of honor let's honor the entire team please 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, let me tell you why, why I asked them to come. You see, in this kingdom, we must learn to celebrate what works and brings glory to the name of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown. Believers, we must learn to sincerely honor those who not only labor in word and doctrine but sacrifice their entire lives as a contribution towards kingdom come hallelujah and i just thought to take a minute every one of these precious people um i've had the opportunity to at least talk with them aside the gentlemen here and i discern the sincerity of their heart i sympathize with the challenges that come with this industry and the ability to remain true regardless of all the needs and you know the challenges that come across we've been blessed by the ministry of GUC such an amazing amazing vessel of God hallelujah we've been blessed by the ministry of my wonderful wonderful daughter hallelujah I will not expose you here, don't worry. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And then I, I asked them to come here so that we will let you know that there are people in the body of Christ who discern and can appreciate the contributions that you make. We know it is not easy. We may not know the challenges that you face, the pressures that come from people attempting to give you offers that take you out of the faith life the call for you is stand to the end stand and love him beyond money stand and love him beyond reputation one thing for sure is you can be sure that by the grace of god there is an army behind you praying for you there is an army behind you supporting you there is an army lifting you when you are down in the name of Jesus Christ praise the name of the Lord one thing I'd like for us to do I'm doing this publicly so that it will be a lesson to the body of Christ you don't have to call people out like this but we must learn to let God's army know that we're a united team that is standing to help one another fulfill this great commission in the name of Jesus Christ there is no separate heaven for anybody you are either in the one heaven we're all looking up to or you are not there there is heaven there is a lake of fire praise the name of the Lord so we're going to stretch our hands just pray for this entire team just speak a blessing in one minute we didn't call them out to embarrass them we just call them to strengthen their hands you don't have to kneel you can just stand bless them father this is a token of our contribution as a house to strengthen the hands of these vessels of the gospel who labor bringing songs from the realm of the spirit to help the body of Christ to bless the church we pray for their families we pray for their projects. We ask, oh God, that you will bless them. Bless them. That they will love you passionately. That their worship will be an overflow of their secret place. Help them, oh God, through any mountains that stand before them. And Lord, I pray that they continue to grow in word, in doctrine, in strength. We rebuke every orchestration of darkness over their lives, their families, their health and even this ministry and Lord we give this ministry wings again let it go to the ends of the earth in the name of Jesus Christ it is true that you have been held by God but I prophesy to you as a ministry and as individuals I measure a thousand cubits for you in the spirit and I declare in the name of Jesus rise to a new dimension 
we command the gates of nations to swing open they will receive your ministry we raise strong financial pillars to stand behind you individually and as a ministry in the name of jesus we raise an army of prayer warriors may they stand behind you covering you in prayer in the name of jesus and we agree as a church that no weapon fashioned against you in whatever form will prosper in the name of jesus we bless you we use this as a point of contact to bless the music ministry even in this nation we declare that they are blessed as they labor to bring songs from the spirit we decree and declare that these songs will edify the body songs that are word based songs that are consistent with the doctrine of scripture we declare that all together as one big army through this worship we rise and we go from glory to glory from grace to grace in jesus name amen and amen thank you thank you the lord bless you thank you for coming to our midst the lord honor you in jesus name let's celebrate them as they go back to their seats hallelujah praise the name of the lord second is to appreciate every single person um, all of us who are here our Buja family Zaria family my blessed and precious people and then our entire global family and by extension the body of Christ thank you for the love that you showed me on Friday Friday was my birthday and I was really humbled by several several things that were done in this house and then across surprises of all sorts tear dropping activities and i want you to know that i don't take this for granted i am truly grateful thank you thank you for the prayers thank you for the gifts thank you for the love you know let me tell you something i I was blessed by the many text messages and SMSs and so on and so forth. Usually, this is a usual occurrence during my birthday, but I was really humbled. Um, I, I, can, I confess to you that I, I may not be able to read the entire text messages. Usually, I delete a set of 1,002 or thereabout, and I've deleted 18 sets now. So you can imagine how many text messages came from across the world but then um, I was amazed to receive text messages not without exaggeration from non-christians politicians clerics this was the part that really humbled me I'm not talking of just non-christian people I was very humbled this just goes to support what we are doing and to encourage us to let us know that what we are doing is affecting nations and like I told you we are not called to Christians we are called to God's creation everyone who came from God should have something to benefit from our lives even if they reject our doctrine they should not reject the quality the quality of our understanding and the love that comes from this gospel that we believe <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the lord so i truly am grateful thank you our wonderful people all of you who put things together to just see that that day was a success thank you i appreciate you when i came in i met another round of embarrassment thank you thank you so so much May celebration never depart from you. In the name of Jesus. And then in the same vein, let me apologize. Many of you looked forward to the broadcast on Friday. You would have seen by now that um, we had a few hitches and the broadcast was not at its best in terms of the visual quality and the presentation. I sincerely apologize for this you know um, things just happen and I I told myself that I would take five or ten minutes from my time of ministration 
just to do a brief recap on what I talked about now that I have the attention of the world again because it's a very important message very important message please be seated for a few minutes thank you <clears throat> hallelujah it's my culture to bring words from the Lord that edify the body of Christ at these strategic seasons of my life and this time around it was no exception except that it was not communicated as effective as I would have preferred it to and um, because of that please let me your attention all the overflows those following from everywhere just five ten minutes let me do a quick recap and then we'll get into the business of the night I brought to our understanding three strong messages number one was concerning our love for Jesus Christ that was the first message that the Lord gave me for everyone but particularly for the body of Christ that we must re-examine the level and the quality of our love and our passion for Jesus Christ it matters that we love Jesus it matters that we prioritize him above every other thing don't just say i love jesus He's, he asks a question he says simon but jonah john 21 lovest thou me more than these it's not enough to say i love jesus you must prioritize him above money prioritize him above career above anointing above bible study Bible study is not Jesus. Prayer is not Jesus. Heaven is not Jesus. The throne room is not Jesus. Jesus is a person. He is Lord. He must be lifted and exalted above all these things. Praise the Lord. So this is the first call. Just by way of recap, we must be passionately in love. This has been my drive um, to the body of Christ for many years that we must come to a point where we truly truly love him we must love him with everything that we have this is what the bible says i'm deep in love with you abba father i'm deep in love with you lord i'm deep in love with you precious jesus i'm deep in love with you lord just sing it one time from your heart i'm deep in love with you abba father i'm deep in love with you lord may that be your hunger forever I'm deep in love with you, precious Jesus. I'm deep in love with you, Lord. Listen, in this end time, there are realms that not even prayer warriors can get there. There are realms that not even war giants can get there. It is a realm where only lovers. It says, no eye has seen. Revelation cannot take you there. Nor ear heard. Neither has it come into the heart of anyone. What God has in store, not for them that pray, not for them that go to church, not for them that fast, but them that love him. You can do all of these activities from a religious standpoint. I challenge you in all your doing and in all your living love jesus don't just say i love god god means many things we're talking jesus the one who has been exalted today who is both lord and christ and perhaps you are here you came for koinonia you are in any of the overflows down to the basement outside following from all across the world you're yet to make this decision somewhere in the course of my teaching i'm going to be making an altar call 
and when you hear that call do not harden your hearts the bible says run like there's fire on the mountain when that call is made and come to jesus and begin a real journey that has eternal value our love for jesus the second thing very quickly that i spoke about on friday was a call to effective living the lord began to put a burden in my heart there are many many people who are not living effectively effective living means living with intention and living with a sense of purpose and destiny the bible says except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city he said the watchmen watch it but in vain it is vain to wake up early in the morning to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow there are so many people this is take it as a miracle service message too effective living gallivanting from pillar to post and the only thing growing in your life is your age nothing else is growing there has to be a call to effective living it says lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me we must trust god for grace to bring to end this living of nonchalance and lack of purpose and intention rigmaroling and freelancing around life what are you living for nothing what are you pursuing nothing what is the project destiny project you are embarking on part time nothing especially to my generation of young people we must obtain grace to sit down and i love social media I, I believe it is a blessing but in the name of jesus and in the name of honesty part of the miracles that we must receive tonight is the grace to manage our lives as far as internet social media and all these things are concerned don't misunderstand me i believe there is a blessing to these things if managed there is a dangerous spirit of distraction that is literally eating up people the unit of destiny is time whatever you give your time to you are giving part of your life to and you must be sure and insist that you are giving part of your life to what is worth it i'm amazed at the extent of visionless living that we have in our society we must trust god for grace to live effectively i learned effective living from dr miles monroe bless his heart buy books that teach you how to live effectively have goals for your life have projects per time per season that you're embarking on run away from a life that does not have something motivating you you cannot freelance through life and want to live victoriously hallelujah a great man said at the end of our lives there are two things we are going to be remembered for the problems we solved the solutions that we birthed or the problems we created we used to sing a hymn those days in the seminary it says thus till we pass um how, how does how does he put it only to be remembered by what we have done you must make sure that your life is governed by three factors number one the fear of the lord number two conscience number three a sense of posterity and then number three which was quite an important one that i spoke about in that broadcast was the need for a greater sense of love and unity within the body of christ the holy spirit has put this burden in my heart for years and it's been my advocacy for a long time that the body of christ as a corporate entity as the bride of christ needs to come into a higher and more intentional level of unity there is so much we can do as a united force there is so little we can do 
as individuals there are dimensions of the glory and the power of god that cannot be birthed by a single individual no matter how effective it will take the corporate body to be able to reveal that dimension of god and here and there you hear teachings that attempt to bring a greater sense of cohesion within the body of christ but i think that um we shouldn't just talk about unity but we should help to supply a few keys and so i thought that in this broadcast i would bring two or three keys that would help the body of christ come into a sense of unity these are the keys that without them i do not see um the project for unity and love as a project that is doable without these keys let me run through these three keys are you interested key number one is for the body of christ to come into a sense of love and unity we will need the practice we will need to introduce the practice of mutual honor as a value system it is impossible to attain unity in an atmosphere of dishonor or when honor is not mutual for a long time the trend in the body of christ has been individualism and this sense of bitterness sarcasm hatred over one ministry one pastor one we we have to grow and mature beyond this point this is what the holy spirit was sent to do in our lives and to do in his body the practice of mutual honor as a value system don't go around insulting men of god insulting churches contrasting people causing trouble for men of god comparing this one is more anointed than this this one is more blessed you there will always be trouble when there is no sense of mutual honor are we together yes everyone who is called by god in ministry in business we just finished a series on witnesses everyone has a call and within the limit of their call election and assignment they are deserving of honor politicians deserve their honor for the sacrifice of formulating policies and leading the nation business people deserve their honor for helping to bring development across a territory and to supply financial resources men and women of god spiritual leaders generally speaking they are deserving um, of honor for connecting a territory to faith and helping to shape the spiritual convictions of people within a territory career people are contributors to nation building contributors to destiny until we come to a point where we are unashamed about acknowledging the contribution of one another and to lavishly and honestly and truthfully communicate honor there cannot be unity in the body of christ by the time i come and stand here and attempt to outshine every man of god here we have great ministers of the gospel scattered here in the overflows many following online imagine that i downplay them i downplay their relevance i rubbish what they are doing and make it look as though they are not serious with god i am the one let me tell you how you know you are in error the moment it looks like you are the only one who is right is a sign that you are under attack do not fall into the attack of elijah elijah said i am the only one and god said nonsense there are seven thousand others who have not bowed are we together we must have that greater sense of cohesion you are a music minister don't come and laugh at another music minister oh this one is this this one is that we must obtain grace and maturity both spiritual and psychological to grow past this realm of childishness there is need to practice mutual honor i look forward to times when men of god can sincerely appreciate themselves can i tell you this it is it is not news that the body of christ has different dimensions of problems and troubles it is solving from excesses here and there to doctrinal issues to personality issues of men of god these things are not new 
are we together now none of them is a reason enough to bring hatred jealousy backbiting most of this hatred and jealousy in the body of christ it didn't come because of ministry it came because of a background of deprivation a background where we seem to not have made it and so we look forward to platforms to vent those things out and then we mix them and make it look like it's the holy spirit making us act that way no the holy spirit is never to be blamed for those attributes of the flesh it is the dimension of us that has not yielded to his renewal that is tampering with the anointing he gave us and is producing a mix of results we must learn to honor one another can i tell you this we must honor the fathers of faith you don't honor a father because he's flawless or perfect you honor a father because that position warrants your honor forever we have to be careful some of these mistakes we keep making around and just because nothing seems to be an obvious consequence we think there is no consequence every father of faith within this nation is deserving of honor and then we must honor our contemporaries listen i must admit something and we must all admit it also the truth is that we are equal in christ but we are not equal in results we are not equal in grace it is an uncomfortable truth that we must admit the election of grace alongside the sacrifice of alignment has separated us into cadres of possibilities we cannot downplay that however we must look past those things look past crowd look past revelational prowess look past prophetic power look forth look past the grace for miracle signs and wonders and be able to meet someone and shake the person even if it is 10 members that he has how are you sir how is the work you are doing and usually you say ah you are the ones doing the work you have all the crowd there be wise enough to say no we are co-laborers provided there is one soul that you are a pastor over it is worth to God that one soul is still worth the blood of Jesus you see when you maintain that disposition the likelihood that that person will criticize you and be jealous and be envious is no longer there because you have let that person know that you equally appreciate what they are doing we must honor the fathers we must honor our contemporaries in ministry and we must also honor our sons our daughters and our mentees if you honor the fathers alone and disregard your contemporaries and your mentees you are a hypocrite the bible says honor all men can i tell you this we are sons and thank god for the privilege of raising other sons and mentees but when you fight sons and fight mentees and don't appreciate what they are doing whether with you or not god will help them grow when they grow without your contribution do not expect loyalty from them let me tell you this fatherhood demands that you are patient with sons they will make mistakes they will do stupid things that's what it means the the condition to be a father is that you must be ready to take a lot of nonsense from sons that's what makes you a father Don't discourage younger ministers coming. They will, you will see pride, you will see flesh, you will see carelessness. Your assignment as a father is to be able to call them rebuke, correct, but show love. Let them know that you believe in what they are doing. We have, we have this attitude of using our progress to bully people who are coming up in ministry. When a young man says, I'm getting into ministry, we who God has helped a bit, usually we come with this sense of sarcasm. What do you know? What are you doing? They will make mistakes. They should learn. It's better for your sons and daughters to make mistakes in your lifetime as a father, where you can correct and build them and be sure of the product you are releasing to the world. This is not a, a, a license for licentiousness. Sons and daughters should also behave well because if you are learning, you should be growing. Are we together? We must be patient. Honor the fathers. Honor our contemporaries and co-laborers. We must also honor the ones who God is helping to come up. The little children. 
you watch the video of my dear children here azaria children who were singing those little children are the prophets the apostles of tomorrow many many parents both spiritual and natural are being punished today because of their insensitivity to reach down to another generation and help them if you were not there when i was in the cave of adulam don't expect an invitation when i'm sitting on the table of greatness we must be there for people and grow with them not just show up in their success and want a stake in their lives this is a message to the body of christ there is no tell them it's a message to everybody let's honor the fathers my fear listen I, i'm speaking by the privilege of the apostolic grace my fear now again is the kind of sons and mentees that we are raising we have to be very careful and be sure that we are raising people who love the lord the level of pride the level of of self-centeredness carnality that is rising every young man right now just because you can preach or prophesy you can insult anybody it ought not to be so we must restore honor to the body we are not stupid people christianity is not a blind religion just because we're in christ does not mean our common sense was taken away even our natural heritage teaches us that respect and honor pays are we together now that is the first key that will produce unity the ability to salute people you are a man of god don't sit down and gather sons and daughters and be talking about men of god all over castigating people no let me tell you this one of the ethics of fatherhood is that you must gauge the spiritual level of the people who are within your mentorship there are certain discussions and there are certain information that you should not expose younger believers to these are discussions of fathers you now bring people who are just starting the faith and you discourage them or you plant pride in them and then sons and daughters you have a responsibility to protect and uphold your fathers don't join the head of men of god and cause trouble for people around oh man of god i went somewhere they spoke about you oh man of god they, they, this is the trouble that most people bring upon the body of christ we are god's bride and we must you be united and appreciate ourselves like i was saying i look forward to times when a man of god will be organizing a crusade or a program and another man of god will write off a check for buses or sound and say i do not know you i just know that what you are doing is going to glorify the name of the lord here is my contribution noiseless contribution genuinely not the type you close the door and say don't mind them no when someone comes around you to gossip and talk about men of god rebuke him then tell him let's pray It is a word of warning because there are spiritual consequences listen this house as a principle we are people of honor you will never hear me open open up stand here and mention the name of any man of god and castigate and criticize that is not the ministry we are giving we are giving the ministry to preach christ yes we will challenge wrong doctrines yes we have our value system as individuals and as a ministry but let me tell you this you want to see the backing of god in your life i'm teaching you the secret you must not only love god you must love the body people will make mistakes people will teach there will be error in doctrine god has granted us grace across different divides and for us who god has helped a bit with either influence or revelatory graces or prophetic power or grace for signs and wonders or leadership we must administer such in the spirit of humility i go to places and when people see me even great people oh apostle god bless you i don't stand and brag my chest and say now you know i'm happy you are recognizing no why did you go through the school of the spirit then you must reciprocate listen when a great man celebrates you understand it is not easy it's not easy for people to stake their reputation and appreciate you 
and so if and when they do receive it with thanksgiving but have the intelligence to reciprocate are we learning so this is the first key to the unity of the body the second key that i'm proposing and i said that in my broadcast that can help the body to be united is to understand the jurisdictional component of authority authority without jurisdiction is dangerous there is a growing trend in the body of christ of every yes we must love the body of christ and we must have that ability to understand the jurisdictional component if one of our little ones here is running around you can hold that one and bring the person because it's within your jurisdiction but you cannot go to the road and just open a door and start flogging an, another person's child and you say you're a disciplinarian it's not done that way it's not your jurisdiction are we are we following now do you know what killed john the baptist in the bible bible students do you know the bible called him the greatest prophet he was the greatest when he stayed within his jurisdiction he had finished his assignment by announcing christ he would have stayed with honor but he went into the issue of talking about herodias why did you marry the wife of this and that and for that mistake even though he was a prophet they jailed him and his head went for it the way he died i don't believe that's how god would want to honor someone that way there is a jurisdictional component to authority are we together the body of christ will never experience unity when there is no jurisdiction ah this man had a crusade or this man had a seminar oh he didn't do it correctly mm -mm, mm -mm. that is not your assignment if you observe anything that was not done well go to god in prayer the prayer altar is there pray for them are we blessed number three the third key that can promote unity in the body of christ is outright forbearance there are certain levels of transformation that may never honestly happen pragmatically speaking you will just need forbearance i think i've taught it here the difference between forgiveness and forbearance forgiveness means that it's a pardon for something transgression trespass forbearance means create a system of accommodation because whatever you have seen will happen again and again and again for instance there are men of god who are different there are some of us who are on the arrogant side there are some of us who are on the extroverted side there are some who are very reserved and into themselves are we together now forbearance angry elijah temperous moses stammerer moses are we together slow and annoying samuel all of them were used by god i hope you know it was samuel's delay that made saul to lose his throne are we together yes all those people proud and self-centered elijah i'm the only one and god said keep quiet yet all of them were used by god and this bible is very intentional about preserving their exploits and when we get to hebrews 11 the bible calls all of them elders for by it it says the elders obtained a good report praise the name of the lord we need forbearance if your pastor is an angry person pray 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 but while you pray just create forbearance forbearance means expect it and build joy above it don't expect him to change to be happy that is that is not a wise approach and this applies not only to men of god husbands wives and all of that i think i made a statement on on friday one time i was counseling a couple and the man apologized to the woman for something he had done wrong and he said i promise it will never happen i just told him i said mr man just stop there i assure you 
to say it will not happen no madam your own assignment build a system of joy from scripture let his transformation be an added advantage to your joy not the basis for it are we blessed you need to forbear the bible tells us it mandates that we forbear so that you don't get up for instance and go to a church and you find people dancing and jumping and say what rubbish is going on here <clears throat> forbear jesus is still there just search for him you can go somewhere else and it looks like nothing is going on there forbear a man of god may be teaching you are used to a man of god being careful and quiet and very calculated you go somewhere and the person is jumping up and down forbear don't just conclude because it's, it's not an experience that is similar with the pattern you are used to just because it's a pattern you are not used to does not mean it's not of god we need forbearance <laughs> hallelujah personally you would have noticed that i'm somebody who likes taking unnecessary things out of the way straight to the point opening prayer worship once you are done open fire next program there's no drama and mm -mm. but i mean you you can't go somewhere and they're acting drama and say they are wasting time no somebody is getting blessed from that drama if it's not blessing you it's because god that's why drama is not the only thing done in the church there is opening prayer if that one does not bless you be patient for worship if worship does not bless you let testimonies bless you if everything does not bless you an altar call is what you need listen i'm not being sarcastic this this is this is a miracle service we're going to leave the issue of sickness and the rest we're coming there but this is a message for the body of christ can i tell you this with all humility by the grace of god there is no there is no major denomination as it were that i have not preached in within this nation adapt adaptation is proof of honor you must be able to adapt if you go to a place and they are singing hymns find a hymn book look at the wordings now that you are a christian the wordings will even mean more to you we sang powerful hymns and didn't know what we we're saying i remember those days in the seminary they would ask us to repeat stanza one three five after we are we've sang six stanzas yeah come on please why stanza one three maybe verse and finish but now you read the same hymns and you cry and say such power captured in it when you search for jesus in his body you will find him in the midst of the lampstands an imperfect lampstand i saw one in the midst of a lampstand jesus himself praise the name of the lord provided we want to walk in unity listen to me we must obtain grace from god to forbear we must obtain grace from god to forbear everybody you see both preachers and members and business people and politicians they are in a state of transformation there is nobody who has graduated from the school of the spirit the school of the spirit is a school that you never graduate while god is using you you are still going through that training we must have a strong sense of forbearance the principles of global leadership demand that you must have a, a strong sense of flexibility you are dealing with people from different cultures different experiences it doesn't forbear does not mean just to allow anything happen no there has to be flexibility are we blessed so the keys to unity mutual honor and then number two understanding jurisdiction as we administer authority and then number three forbearance 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 and then i rounded up that broadcast by expressing my gratitude and i'm doing it again thank you thank you some of you now you are forbearing me isn't it because you are you, you came ready for power and shouting i'm tired of these demons tired of them apostle get these spirits out of me just be patient i've taught you forbearance
hallelujah praise the name of the lord i pray that in our lifetime we will be able to see a greater sense of cohesion in the body i pray that in our lifetime we'll be able to look past our differences and be able to focus on jesus and obtain grace to drive this body to her desired heaven to be greater reflections of the reality of the life the love and the power of jesus are we in agreement lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love Once the pride of prejudice shall cease, when we are your instrument. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.